This is the shuttle. Sometimes people get them mixed up. You can make this, this much fabric, paper full shuttle, a few full shuttles, or you can make even more, like enough for a full blanket. This is the difference between when it's up on these hooks and when it's down on these hooks. Um, as you can see, these strands used to be at the bottom right here. Instead, now they're up at the top. Because there are lines that go in between these holes. I think you can see. And if you look very closely, you can see the change. I think it's very cool. Here's a brief overview of the pieces that are needed to build the kit. We have all the wood and 3D printed pieces as well as the miscellaneous screws and bits of string that are needed to assemble a table loom. With the pieces that you see right here, you can build a loom that can make fabric from scratch at home. On the right we have the frame pieces. These are 1 by 2 inch lumber and they're used to assemble the frame using these 3D printed end caps. The 3D printed end caps together with the tower make up the primary color when you're selecting. Over here we have the half inch dowels that are used for the warped beam and the cloth beam respectively. We have the half inch dowels that are used for the tie up rods. And then we have these 3 8 inch dowels that are used to hold the heddle together as well as to make a shuttle. On this side we have the secondary color pieces. On the bottom we have a threading hook used for the slots in the heddle. We have the pawls that hold the ratchets in the end knobs in place when they're in use. We have the two ends of the dowel style shuttle. Then we have a smaller shuttle. Over here we have the end caps with the ratchets on them. And then at the very end we have the two heddles. These are rigid heddles and the ones shown here are 10 dent. In the back we have the two frame pieces that hold the heddles in place when they are in use. And then in the back we have some miscellaneous hardware. Those are rubber end feet so that the table loom will be stable in use, miscellaneous screws, and some paracord for attaching the tie-up rods. To start with, we're going to grab the frame pieces and we're going to grab the parts that are in the primary color. That is the 3D printed end caps as well as the towers here in the back. There are two of each end, but we're going to grab one of each as well as one tower. And the first thing we're going to do is take the two longer boards. The middle one is going to go between the towers in a minute. And we're going to slot one end here. Then we're going to take one of these two towers and make sure that the uh, square bit is going to go away from the side that has this nice texturing. It's going to slide in here, approximately into the middle, and then we're going to add the second end cap. These are fairly tight fit, so you might have to tap them with a mallet to get them to go in. And now this little bit can slide freely. And then we do the same thing with the other side. Square end again goes opposite from the direction of this texturing. And the other cap goes on. This is the basic of the frame. From here, what we're going to do is take this middle piece and slide it into the middle part of the frame. And then we can attach both sides like so. In a moment, after we've got all the pieces exactly where we want them, you can add screws to these holes here to hold it in place and secure them with screws here. But before we do that, we're going to add some rubber feet. The next step is to take the two dowels, which are going to be the cloth beam and the warp beam, and we're going to press them through here. And you'll notice that this does not match up right now. It's not a problem. We'll just slide it until it does. And then press it through both. And the same thing with the other end. That is the basic frame of the table when completed. From here, it's time to grab the end caps. 
These are the knobs that are going to hold and allow us to turn the warp beam and the cloth beam forward. When attaching these knobs, the important thing is to remember that you want one of each, so one of them has the teeth running in this direction, and the other one has the teeth running in the opposite direction. And we want them to stop this beam from rotating forward. So there's kind of a gentle slope facing toward me at the moment, and that sharp drop-off is facing forward. And we're going to slide one of these onto either end of that warp beam. Once the knobs are in place, the next thing to do is to take these screws and to put a screw through the hole here so that it is secured. To assemble the heddle, we're going to take the two heddle panels and also two of the 3 8 inch dowels. And we're going to thread the dowels onto the heddles like this. We want to have the same amount of dowel on both sides sticking out from the heddle. And these bits of dowel are what are going to sit in these cups in the frame that will make it easier to move your heddle into the appropriate positions for weaving. We've now come to these pieces. This is a pawl and it goes with the ratchet. This has little teeth on it that interface with those teeth and it's going to stop it from rotating forward. In order to put this into place, we're going to put a screw through the hole in the base of it here and then that screw through the bottom here. The screws that I'm using right here are one inch long screws. It needs to be long enough that there's something to bite into the plastic here after it's gone through the hole. With the pawl in position, it can be moved out of the way, in which case the beam will rotate freely, or it can be engaged like this, and then it will stop that beam from rotating forward. To assemble the stick shuttle, take one of the remaining pieces of dowel and then the two stick shuttle ends and just slide the dowel into each of the stick shuttle ends. And just like that, it's complete. Using the paracord that's provided, make two loops that are the same size. These are going to go through the holes in the beam here and will be used to attach the tie-on sticks, like so. I've gone ahead and made two loops. These are the same size. And what I'm going to do is press them through the holes in the beam. They say you can't push a string. I beg to differ. It takes patience, but it can be done. And then once it's emerged from the other side, I'm going to pass one end of this loop through the other end to make a simple knot. And then I'm going to pass the tie-on stick through it. You can attach it even more securely using a lark's head knot. Simply bend the loop forward until it makes two loops, fold those loops so they face each other, and then pass the stick through. And then do the same thing for the other side. This stick is what the warp will be attached to that will allow it to be ratcheted back into place. To attach the rubber feet to the bottom, simply place the rubber foot over the screw hole in either end and place a screw into the prepared hole. Repeat for all four sides. The completed loom is able to weave cloth 12 inches wide. And here is the completed loom. Congratulations, you're ready to get started weaving. If you'd like to order a loom like this one, you can find a link in the description below to my Etsy shop. And if you would like to print one for yourself, the files are all for free on Thingiverse. Happy printing and happy weaving. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe below. We look forward to seeing you next time.